He's a music sensation in his own right, and he reached global fame, especially here in Australia, starring on the critically acclaimed Swedish teen drama hit Netflix TV show, Young Royals. And now the world has the pleasure to fall in love with him and discover his music, the music of the talent that is our next guest as he joins us here on The Troy Murphy Show to talk his latest single. It's a single called I'm So Excited. Omar Rudberg, welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, is this your first Australian radio interview? I think so, yeah. It's, I, it's probably, yeah, it's my first time I'm ever on uh, doing an Australian interview, yeah. And do you know much about Australia? Because you've got a lot of fans down here. Really? I'm so happy to hear that. Um, I, I've i never been to Australia. I know a little bit about Australia, not that much. But, you know, actually, Australia is one of the places that I would really want to visit one day. Well, when you do, I'll take you out on the town and I'll show you everything that Sydney has to offer. Awesome. Sounds <laughs> great. <laughs> now, Omar, let's talk about your music. You've released original music. You've released covers. What made you choose to cover your latest single, I'm So Excited? Well, actually, I performed I'm So Excited with a live band called Cotton Club here in Sweden at a gay gala well the gay gala here in sweden um and after that fans has been they have been asking me like oh can you please release it can you please release it um and so then we started working on it and then we decided to release three different versions of of the cover because why not um people loved it and uh it's just for fun you know i love i love having fun with music and um yeah, it was just a really nice experience at the gala, so I had to release it after. Oh, it's such a great song. It's been on high rotate uh, in my house for days. Uh, now the... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, now, the Pointer Sisters who released the original song, uh, their, their, their version is such a gay anthem. It's a party classic across the world. Uh, in Australia, we call that handbag music here in the LGBT plus community in Australia. Uh, it's such a feel-good song. Do you hope that your version becomes a go-to party playlist song or, I guess, nowadays a trending TikTok sound? Uh, well... I released three different versions, so I feel like if you, I, I, I feel like there's a version for everybody in the little, uh, eat, like a single bundle. There's one that is a, a slower version, a little sexier version, and there's one uh, that I think that you love a little extra, and that's the, like the more up-tempo, clubby, dance-friendly version. Um, I just hope people like what I release um, and I don't really see it become uh, the smash hit that the original is but you know I it would make me really happy if people really love love the versions and maybe do some TikTok dances and some dance moves to it as well. Yeah, definitely. You are too modest. Now, do you have a favorite version of your own? Uh, I actually like the additional version, the, the sexier one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you prefer recreating iconic covers or producing your own original music? Uh, I love doing both, but um, I would... I would do covers if it actually makes sense. For example, now I performed I'm So Excited at the gala and people really liked it and wanted it on Spotify. So then I did a studio version and I released it, right? Um, and for me, that kind of makes sense. Um, that's when I really love doing covers. But if not that, I really love doing my original stuff. Um, and I've been working a lot on upcoming music and my original sounds and songs and I'm in love and I cannot wait to release them. Now, we've got your career a little bit backwards here in Australia. We first discovered you on Young Royals, but music is always has always yeah. been number one. How did you get in? For those in Australia who, who may not know, how did you get into music? What what started it all for you? Uh, well, so I've been singing and dancing since I was a little, little kid. Um... And I started very, very young. I started when I was 10 years old singing at, like, small little talent shows at the mall, you know, around in Stockholm and at parks. Um, 
And then my mom took me to, uh, like, long story short, we did, I did the, uh, the Sweden Got Talent um, uh, TV program. And then I kept on doing, like, these talent shows. And then I got discovered on YouTube because my mom always posted everything that I did on stage on YouTube. Um, and so I got discovered and then I came into this, I was one of the members uh, in this new Swedish pop boy band when I was 14. And then we literally blew up. Like our first gig together ever was opening up for Justin Bieber in one of the biggest arenas here in Sweden. So um, after that, we had a long boy band career, basically me and my three brothers. Well, not brothers, literal brothers, but my <laughs> bandmates. Um, and we literally toured uh, the country, Scandinavia. We went to Latin America. We also went to the U.S. a couple of times. And, you know, we had a, a really fun time together until I was 18. And then when I was 18, I started my solo career. So um, for me, the music has always been a part of me since a young age. Um, and that's who I am. Like, I'm a singer uh, from the start. Um, now doing this acting in Young Worlds, this is all new to me. So it's really fun to try out uh, the acting part of everything. You mentioned Justin Bieber. Let's talk about that. You've opened when you were part of the boy band uh, for One Direction and Justin Bieber. Who's hotter, Justin Bieber yes. or Harry Styles? <laughs> Oh shit, that's a hard question, man. Um, <laughs> uh, I cannot choose. Like, who could choose that question? I don't know. I cannot choose that. <laughs> oh, go on, go on. There's got to be a, one of them had to have done something a little bit special to win your heart. Ah, uh, damn. I mean, I was. I think I was. I was when I was younger more of a believer than a. Direction fan, so I, I then I'll say Justin Bieber. <laughs> and which artist in the music? <laughs> good answer, good answer. <laughs> uh, and and second part to that question, which which artist in the music world would you love to work with, either collab or open for duet, go on a date with anything? Oh, I would love doing <laughs> anything with anyone, really. No, but I listen to a lot of. A lot of different artists. I listen to Justin, Harry, um, Ariana, uh, Rosalia, Maluma, The Weeknd. Like, there's, I can, I cannot, like, I could keep on going all day. Like, I love all these artists, and I'm open to um, do anything <laughs> with anyone because I love them so much. And I also, I'm very spread out uh, music-wise. Like, I could definitely do like an up-tempo crazy club song but i can also do like a super ballad one and so um you know i'm i'm i love literally every single artist out there so by the way uh i love troy sivan that's that i gotta say yes ozzy such a great iconic ozzy singer huh? and actor yeah yeah right I'll have my people call Tr uh, Troy Savan's people and I'll have them call your people. How about we arrange that? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, me and Troy got to know each other at Fashion Week um, um, like a few weeks ago or a month ago or something like that. He was super nice and I cannot wait to let him, him show, showing me around in Australia. Well, now you've got two Troys who can show you around, Omar. You just have to pick. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll start with you. All right. Good, good answer. Good answer. Now, Omar, you have such a captivating stage presence. It is mesmerizing to watch. And, and you're so young. Where do you get your confidence from? Um, well, thank you. Um, I... Uh... I don't really know, like, since since a young age, I've always loved being on stage and dancing. Like, when I was three years old, my grandmother always put me on a table when we had, like, family gatherings and parties. And then I, I was, 
are is the family basically and i always had to make a show out of out of every single family gathering that we had so i i don't know like it just started so early so for me it was always like a little kick um being on on stage and, and you know entertaining people so that's like my biggest passion in life i would say being on stage like doing a show like having all these uh dancers with me like that's a dream come true to make like a huge show out of out of my music one day um and to let people know like what i actually am capable of doing on stage um like to show my full potential um but yeah no i love being on stage like that's my that's my thing <laughs> <laughs> let's talk fashion is there anything that you do not look good in you wear the most amazing outfits and you wear it well have you ever put an outfit on and just gone no nah, this doesn't work or are you just blessed to make everything that you wear work um well i wouldn't say like that every well i mean it depends on my taste really like i when i when i have feet fitting um i you know i choose like the best outfit that i actually like and maybe like change something or something like that but so um i don't know i feel kind of insecure whenever i have hats on like like bigger hats um or like um yeah or small little hats like hats for me is a little hard to i mean i could pull it off on a shoot or something like that you know because you choose like the pose and you you have the lighting and all of that but to walk around in in the city like with a big hat on i that wouldn't really be my thing um but you know um i mean there's a few things that i wouldn't really wear maybe because i'm insecure or you know so i i just like being comfortable and feeling great about myself and then that's literally the key to um pulling off like uh, an outfit like looking good in an outfit you have to feel good and com- comfortable and confident now you were recently in LA for what your instagram tells us meetings and to write songs can you tell us how that trip went uh it went amazing like i've been to LA a lot of times um but i think this was the fastest trip but also the most booked and busy trip trip uh and i really think that it went so so well i got to know some great producers and songwriters that literally works for the biggest artists out there um and i'm so lucky that i even got to work with these people um and uh i really hope that we can work a lot more together but it went great and uh I have new friends and I also met some old friends uh in the city that I have since way back actually du- during the boy band uh days we toured the US and I got to know uh some friends over there so we had a meet up in the um, no it went amazing like I had some exciting meetings as well and yeah it was great let's talk your fan base they are dedicated if you could say anything to your <laughs> fans what would you say um thank you and uh i love you good answer now that's, uh, that's, that's yeah that's it like i i don't even know how to thank them enough but um but yeah i will do my best to make them feel seen and um uh, to make them uh, feel um what i feel about them do your fans ever get a little too excited on your social media like how crazy are your dms uh they're pretty crazy but i think it's fun um fans like if you're a fan um then it's just uh good vibes uh and um good energy that they sent that they sent my way um so i love uh checking out social media and seeing what they're saying and they also like keep me so updated like they tweet like 
information stuff about me that I don't even know. Like, for example, like how my songs are going, if they're on a playlist, like, you know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm like, oh, shit, that's, that's, that's so cool. Sorry that I'm, that I said a bad word, but <laughs> I don't it's know okay. if you guys say bad words in Australia. <laughs> Now, Omar, what is the most amazing thing you've seen a fan do or create online for you? Oh, man. Uh, actually, the other day I saw uh, it- Italian fans uh, in Italy. They, like, print- printed out my Spotify profile picture and they put out, like, a code where you take a picture of that code and then you go straight to my Spotify account. Um, and they actually spread those pictures out everywhere in the city and they gave it to people and you know to promote my music and my spotify and i think that's so beautiful and i'm so grateful for that like it's just crazy to me that people actually care so much um but you know i i i'm so thankful i would never take that for granted um yeah like i have to go to italy now to bring them a big ass show for them well, I, 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 uh, they I, deserve it. <laughs> I do want to talk about taking your music around the world a little bit later. But before I do, you also got to perform music on the hit Netflix show that you're also a star of, uh, Young Royals. What was that like as an experience? Oh, uh, well, so um, my character, Simon, he um, sings in this school choir. Um, and it was actually very hard for me in the beginning because I've never sang in a choir before. Um, and the tempo and how you like, like sing the melodies with like all these students singing, like it was so, so hard for me because it's a whole nother tempo. Like the keys like goes up and goes down. Like it's just like a whole different world when it comes to singing. So I, had to learn how to how to sing in a choir you know but um it was so much fun like i love singing that's what i want to do my whole life um and uh it was so much fun to learn uh all of that uh i think it's really good for me also because i'm in the studio all the time and you know you uh like develop and you grow and so yeah it was it was an amazing experience now, while we're talking about young royals, we, and when I say we, I mean the world, is on the edge of our seats waiting to know what happens in the third and final season, which was in the top ten in yeah. Australia when it was released, which I'm, I'm so happy for. Can you share anything about season three? Have you seen scripts? When does filming start? When can we expect it to hit Netflix? What can you share with us? <laughs> <laughs> um I we have started seeing the script um and uh I'm loving it so much um and we are starting shooting very soon um and that's going to be so exciting it's the final season so it's going to be a lot of shooting days um but I'm so excited it's going to be amazing we're gonna do literally our best ever so this final season is just the best thing you've ever seen in your <laughs> life um <laughs> um and yeah that's like what i can say i don't know if i can say anything else but um we've seen the script and it looks really nice so you've seen the um, full script and uh uh no i I know kind of like what what the storyline is about and all of that, but I haven't read the whole script yet. But right. um, we're we're on the way. So, uh, we're getting started, so it so, feels really nice. Yeah. So hypothetically, do you think that your character Simon could get used to royal life? Uh well, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Simon. Simon is um, Simon is a very strong, like, like he got some some strong, like a really strong personality, and he know he knows his worth, um, and he um, got his dreams and the things that he wants to do in life, 
um, and I don't think that the royal life would um, be anything that he would want, really. Um, so I don't think so. But I mean, you never know. What about you never know? What about you personally? Would you like to live the royal life? Oh, I would definitely want to try that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and but uh, I don't know if I would live in that like all my life. But maybe like a week or something. Yep, fair enough. <laughs> as would he, as would we all. <laughs> now, yeah. I guess you, even though you know, oh, I was going to ask you what do you uh, hope happens to your characters, Simon, in season three. But you've read the script, so I guess whatever you tell us might give it all away. We don't want to give too many se uh, secrets away. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I don't know if I actually can say what I would hope. Well, it, it's. I feel like it's so hard to say now that I actually, when I actually know what's happening, you know. Um, but you know, as I said before, like when me and Edwin we were in New York doing some promotion, um, November last year, we said that we hope to see them smile and to feel some uh, Simon and Wilhelm love for once, you know. Um, so. I love Simon and Wilhelm and they're forever, they, they will always be like my little babies um, because it changed, they changed my whole life. Um, so I love them and I just hope that they are happy. <laughs> and it sounds so weird talking about that because it sounds like I'm talking about real people, but they're actually not real. Oh, I'm sure to many they are. They are, <laughs> they are real. <laughs> now, Netflix is amazing. <laughs> well, yeah. Netflix is amazing. For green lighting, a gay coming out, a coming of age story like Young Royals. For you, how important is it that we continue to see shows like this? Um, it is very important to me uh, because, and for a lot of people out there, um, and I also feel like it's very important for people that, like, is it really in the LGBTQ plus community because they have to learn and they have to see like what it's like and understand people that go through stuff and and that and understand people that are in the lgbtq plus community uh to to understand you know and to be more educated basically um so it's so important for the whole world to see it and um i really hope that it keeps on going and not like also, in like, a, I really hope that in a real way, like, that we show that, like, gay and queer people actually are people like like everybody else and that they actually also can love and be in love and have a normal life and, you know, being normal teenagers and, you know, being people, like, real people. That's what I would want to see more in the world and not only like showing this facade or this like this you know uh picture that people might sometimes see lgbtq or queer or gay people uh as um i don't know i feel like young royals shows uh queer and gay people in a different way in a real way and um and that's what i really like about this show and i hope that i can see more of that now, and other shows. Alongside Young Royals, Netflix also released Heartstopper pretty much at the same time and a very similar coming-of-age gay story. Kind of uh, kind of the same, but just less royalty. Fans of both shows went absolutely crazy when they saw you and Edwin interact with the Heartstopper cast online. Have you guys developed a friendship yeah. with the Heartstopper cast offline? Uh well, maybe not friendship, but I actually met um, Kit Connor um, at Fashion Week. I think it was for Bueve as well, yeah, in um, in Paris, I think it was. Um, and um, we met, and we say hi, and, and it was fun meeting each other, finally, after like a year of just seeing each other through the internet. Um, we met, and a lot of fans have been asking us, like on Twitter and Instagram, like everywhere, like, have you guys met? Have you guys met? 
and yes, we met, we we got to know each other a little bit, and yeah, that's pretty much it, basically. What's he like? It was really in, nice meeting him. What's he like in person? He was so nice. Uh, I didn't have much. Uh, I didn't have expect. I didn't even know that he was coming. Um, and then when I saw him, I got super excited, and I went to him, and I said hi, and he said hi, and it was it was a fun moment. Like uh, it was nice. It was he was really nice. Now, Omar, there's a lot of information about you online. Uh, a two-part question here. What's something out there that you've read about yourself that is incorrect and that you would like to correct? Oh, wow. Um, oh, man, what can that be? I don't know. Um, I don't... I don't really i'm not really in the internet that much to know what people actually like say about me or or maybe like a rumor i don't know uh -huh. um i don't think there's a rumor about me anywhere <laughs> um but um no i actually don't know i don't have anything all right, well then answer me this. What's something about you that no one knows out there, especially in your fandom or the media, uh, that you would like to share with your fans today? Um, hmm. That they don't know about me. Um, well, actually, maybe, a, maybe some knows, but I actually saw yesterday that this came out well i don't know if this is interesting even um but i saw that the news came out fans already know but maybe some of you don't know and if you like drag race i'm gonna be uh a guest on the drag race sweden um this sunday oh fantastic well that, that's and that's a little surprise i feel like <laughs> there we go now let's go back to talking about your music because that's why you're here today we're about to play your song, I'm So Excited, for the very first time. I've got to ask, because wow. this is the biggest question your fans have wanted to know when I hinted that you'd be on the show today. Is a world tour okay. on the cards? A world tour? Wow. Um, I mean, that's my dream and goal in life. Um, but... Uh, not really yet. I feel like a world tour, it has to go a lot into into that and making it really, really great. Um, so, I mean, in the future, I would love, I would love. That's like what I want to do, literally. But um, it takes work and, and time. But hopefully, it'll come a time where I do it. I've just heard a collective sigh all across the listening audience uh, <laughs> as everyone was hoping to hear that you were coming to Australia soon or anywhere around the world. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, them, they and all, the amazingly talented Omar Rudberg, his new single, I'm So Excited, is available as a three-track EP and available to buy now. I must for everyone who loves Omar and great music, Omar, thank you so much for your time today. I've really enjoyed chatting with you. I wish we had more time, but uh, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. I hope to come to Australia soon and to see you in person. Follow the Troy